Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today, I've got an integral from Cambridge University, and I um, I saw this integral on the channel. Um, well, his name is spelled J-A-G-O Alexander. I believe uh, that would be pronounced Yago, maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know in uh, non-English languages, J is often pronounced uh, differently than in English, so I believe it's Yago, but I, I could be wrong, so correct me in the comments. Um, but anyway, um, I'll try to link to his video in the description because his solution is the quote-unquote, you know, the way that you would be expected to solve this probably using um, series expansion and things like that. But, you know, being uh, a Feynman integration channel, this being a Feynman integration channel, and, um, you know, me being very familiar with that technique, I instantly recognized that this um, was going to be solvable using Feynman integration. Um, and if you get good at the technique, you'll, you'll come to recognize it pretty quickly, too. Um, and it's much, much easier to solve with Feynman integration. His video is about 25 minutes long. I expect this video to be a lot shorter, even with all my commentary. Um, so let's just get into the solution. First thing we're going to do is distribute that uh, e to the negative x. So we'll know that, that these integrals are equivalent. I just distributed that e to the negative x inside the parentheses and then factored out a negative x. All right, and the next step is kind of arbitrary. Um, since a plus 1 is just a constant, I'm going to let it equal b. Um, and just solve solve the integral uh, from there. So anytime we see b, we really know that that is a plus one. Okay. Um, so th this is our integral. Our integral is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x minus e to the negative bx over x dx. Uh, and I've solved integrals like that, um, or this integral has shown up in the solution to um, a lot of my other integrals. Um, some of you might even recognize what that is already. But anyway, the next step is we're just going to define our integral as a function of b, because that's what it is. It's just a, it's, um, the value of that integral depends on b, so it's a function of b. All right. And we'll also note that if we evaluate our function b at the point, uh, b is equal to 1, we just get 0 because we'd end up with e to the negative x minus e to the negative x in the numerator of that integrand right there. So the whole thing would evaluate to 0. All right. Next, we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign uh, to take f prime of b simply by taking the partial with respect to b of the integrand and leaving the rest alone. So this is what you get. You get f prime of b is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative bx dx, and that easily evaluates to 1 over b. So now we have a closed form expression for f prime of b, so we integrate f prime of b to get back to f of b. So we have f of b is equal to the natural log of b plus c. All right, and now we can use the fact that uh, f of b when b is 1 is equal to 0. So we have f of 1 is equal to 0, which is equal to the natural log of 1 plus c. Of course, natural log of 1 is 0. That implies that our c is equal to 0. That means f of b is just natural log b. But don't forget, b is a plus 1. So it's actually natural log a plus 1. So um, in conclusion, uh, that's the answer. The answer to that integral is simply natural log of a plus 1. Um, and of course, there are restrictions on a. Obviously, um, you do not want the natural log function to go, uh, you don't want it to be 0 or less than 0. So we just place restrictions on a such that that never happens. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and we will see you next time.